This might be one of the most hilariously sad articles I've ever read in my entire life, but also a constant reminder as to how difficult it is to navigate the nightlife scene here in London or in the UK being black. It's just so difficult, especially if you're black and you're hetero. There's something very dehumanizing about how you get treated, especially in some of the most swankier establishments here in London, when you look the way that I look. It's really, really annoying, I have to say. And it's even getting more annoying now with me and my little scene of stuff that I'm into when it comes to the sort of like, you know, techno scene, the disco scene, the LGBTQ gay scene, whatever I'm going to in terms of raves. It's really interesting when you go to these type of places and you look the way that I do and you don't maybe present the way that they would want you to present to get into those places. They judge you on your appearance and kind of rule you out of going there because you're not flamboyantly dressed. You don't have your nails polished. You don't have lipstick. You haven't dyed your hair crazy colors and shit. It's just really annoying because you're kind of going there because you enjoy being around those type of people that do those type of things and you respect and honor their little community and you want to be a part of it and you just love music but then they're discriminating you on what you look like and saying nah you possibly couldn't be liking what we're into and then it's obviously hurts even more if you're a guy that looks like me that has money that wants to go to a place where it's a bit swanky a bit more upmarket and you want to be surrounded by people that maybe have the same beliefs as you or whatever it may be right the outlook in life the taste in life and shit and you go to these places and they're like your money's no good here because you're black your money's no good here because of the way your hair is your money's no good here because of what you're dressing like it's really dehumanizing but it also is hilarious to how this played out because i think this guy has to have a little bit more dignity and pride in himself for what he did i thought was a bit cringy but let's let's um, read the article it says black millionaire denied entry to top london bar claimed he was racially profiled so if we scroll down on the article it says a black millionaire celebrity jeweler who was denied entry um to one of the popular london bars says he was racially profiled Lamar Burko, 30, quoted, uh, sorry, Q to enter 100 Wardour Street in Soho, West London, with eight of his black friends. <laughs> I love how they detail that, innit? Eight of his black friends, the black ones, all of them, they're with me. Um, with eight of his black friends last week, but said that they were turned away from the restaurant and given conflicting reasons as to why. Mr. Burko said the group was blocked from entering <laughs> by a door attendant who was most likely black as well. That's probably the the brutal side of things. A lot of the door attendants and security guards at all these swanky places in London are usually either blacks or immigrants themselves, so they should know what it feels like to get discriminated. But you know, a job's a job. They put that firm hand in front of you or arm or bicep or chest and you're not going anywhere um who said um mr burger said the group was blocked from entering by a door attendant who said that they were too many men too many men too many many men <laughs> and among them only um and among them only to them sorry let's go that again because i didn't really get that one it says mr burger said the group had been blocked from entering by a door attendant who said that there were too many men too many men too many men among them only to then watch as multiple white people in the queue were waved through the doors. <sighs> in my field, I'm used to dealing with racism. In this country, it's always indirect, never direct. For example, I've been stopped by police so many times for no reason other than a car I drive. That is brutal because this also reminds me of one of the times where my little brothers, bless them, they went to Soho or no, they went to Brick Lane one time, I think earlier on when they were first starting to go out. And I guess I'd had no experience of going to Brick Lane or going to these kind of hipster areas with people I grew up with. Because where I grew up was, you know, what people would describe as a rough part of town. And I grew up with people who maybe did some questionable things in their life and maybe had to pay the consequences of the questionable things they did, but they're still my friends. But we only hang up, we only used to hang out with those, or I used to hang out with those people when I was at home. I lived back at home or when we were playing football or when we'd go to like little house raves and shit. There weren't really people that I would go out to the trendy events with. So I always had a bit of a split in terms of my friendship groups. I had friends that I went skateboarding with. I had friends I went to like techno parties with. I had friends that I went and drunk with and did drugs with. I had friends that I hung around with in the ends. So I never really had an experience of, you know, of kind of mixing those friends with other friends. It was always kind of separate. I don't know why, but it just really was. So my brothers went to Brick Lane to party and then I remember them coming back with really angry and just cussing out brick lane everybody there i couldn't understand why and then they described the the feel what happened and basically i think they queued up to go to like 
93 feet east or something like that right back in the day it's not even like a big swanky place or anything but it's obviously at the time it was like tech house central or maybe like funky house central back in back then when it happened and they were denied entry so it was all my all my bro little brother's friends went there together there might have been like 10 of them you know still friends still boys like why can't they all go together to a club somewhere that's a friendship group and then when they got there the bouncer was like yeah denied there's too many boys here. you can't go in and then of course what happens as soon as they get denied a whole group of white lads come in and they will get waved to go in so it's like you're allowing only the white guys to come in in groups but not the black guys coming in groups which is incredibly incredibly racist right but anyway we digress let's continue and then of course the bit where he says here about driving a car is also something that happens a lot in london um it maybe happens in every other part of the world also but for some reason a lot of guys who make a lot of money in london who then go on to buy nice cars always complain about being stopped multiple times by police and usually just to run like you know checks there's nothing you know they've got, they've got the insurance they've got the tax they've got the mot they've got a license there's no reason to stop them if they didn't have if they didn't do some sort of you know traffic violation or infraction or something on the road but they always keep getting stopped it's like a running joke and obviously most of it has to do with the fact that he looks the way that he looks and probably drives something that the police think he shouldn't be driving which in itself is incredibly insulting um and just it just makes you feel like shit do you know what i mean because especially in london a lot of the police especially if you're the area that you live in or the place that you go to you'll probably bump into them a lot of the times so you would imagine they'll probably add a note to their car so that if it does get pinged up on the system they'll say yep yeah, don't worry we check your stuff it's usually good but they just keep stopping them again and again and again and again so you can't even this is that's why people say london and the uk is bad vibes because you can't even really enjoy your wealth and flex like you would do in other countries because people are always questioning whether or not you des not even deserve deserve it whether or not you whether or not that is actually yours um they're questioning whether or not you know what you're doing all these sort of weird things happen here it's a very strange place to live in that's why people usually try and dim their star and not be too like you know out there because they don't want people to discriminate against them and make them feel less than anyway continuing on with the article um as you can see there's a picture here of the young guy there standing in front of a really nice car with a nice suit and a nice watch it says but i could not believe my eyes it says here when the staff member took my friends out of the queue making everyone look at us as we we're troublemakers then let all the white people in and not us i haven't slept i feel so violated exactly imagine that imagine how embarrassing that is to go to one of those swanky um soho places right let me see where she looks like 100 wardour street I bet you it's one of those places on like a bait road as well. See, exactly. It's in Soho. It's on a really bait street. So when you don't get in, people will definitely see you, right? There it is there, a really busy street. So when you don't get in, people definitely see you. They don't get in. And it basically looks like you're all in there trying to sell balloons and then they all chucked you out, which is hilarious because like I said again, you're most likely going to get offered drugs and toilets by girls that look like that than guys that look like the dude that's featured in the article. That's a really crazy thing about it. So fucking hell. Um, Mr. Boko has worked with some of the world's biggest stars, including David Beckham, Burner Boy, Steph London, Wizkid, Callum Hudson Adoy, <laughs> biggest stars, you know, Callum Hudson Adoy, um, and Joey Essex. Anyway, okay, cool. Um, the entrepreneur who runs LB Jewelry built his empire after being kicked out of school at the age of 15 hustler from the day dot right 15 entrepreneurial after becoming a jewelry consultant at age 19 he went on to launch his own business see him sitting here in a royce in a rolls royce he's got what looks like an ap on right he's got a prada shirt a massive chain like this kid is like living right he's living he's made his money he wants to go and that's the thing as well it's annoying it seems like if you're somebody like him who has a bit of money and you prefer to you prefer the nicer things in life and you want to go to these more swankier places, the 100, 100 Wardour streets, the children firehouses and shit, even places like fucking Soho House and whatnot. You have to have a, a con somebody kind of co-sign you in order to get in and not feel like you're being violated in these places just because you want to go to a place that just is a bit more swanky. The only place where you might not get violated and be welcome with open arms is places that are kind of made by people for that are made that by people that look like you, like you know whatever black raves are called and shit. But sometimes you want to mix it up. You don't always just want to go to raves. You want to go to a place where you can maybe sit down, eat, relax, listen to some cool music, change the environment, be around different people, whatever. And you just can't because they view you as other. Do you know what I mean? They don't view you the same as the other people in there, which is really disgusting. It continues. Um, 
Mr. Burko said he questioned the door attendant on why the group was refused entry when others were allowed in after being given different reasons. At first, he said that they were told that there were too many men, were told later the venue was packed, and even though they said the bar was nowhere near capacity. Mr. Burko said he told the employee who felt racially profiled and was told, I don't judge by race, just by the person. That's obviously a lie. If you're going to not let in eight of my friends, how are you then going to let everybody else in that comes in? That's the real kicker there. The jeweler said he felt compelled to explain what he does for a living. Ah, oh, this is where it gets cringe. And this is where he lost me. I'm never that guy. I'm never going to beg. I'm never going to plead. Like even like I said previously on the other episode, the whole, um, you know, instance I've been having with this place called or this rave called Hotbox London and the fact that they, you know, essentially made me um, sing for my ability to enter into their parties and shit and have probably ghosted me for the most part because maybe I don't fit in and I'm not, you know, gay looking enough for them. Um, is you know it's probably enough for me to kind of be like you know what i wash my hands at that place good luck to you but i'm not going to beg and plead to go to a party it's really not that serious and i think the same thing has to be safe for venues once you know it kind of reminds you of those clips you see online of rappers basically um getting disrespected or being treated badly by store employees at luxury fashion stores and then they then go back the next day or the same day and spend loads of money there in an effort to kind of prove and kind of shame the fashion people for like saying hey i belong in here now see you didn't you didn't want to treat me respect look at me spending 10 grand in your shop it's like bro you're not teaching them any lessons you're just making them money they work on commission the company gets the money in a till they've not learned any lesson whatsoever like you're not really showing them up you think you'd where you think you are the way to show them up would be to make a stink about it online and take your you know and basically vote with your wallet and never shop at there again or with the brand ever again that would be the way to kind of you know really uh, make a stand all this sort of other stuff is a bit lame so this part of the story i don't like personally it really makes me feel uneasy and it really is lacking in pride and it really is lacking in dignity not even pride it's lacking in mostly dignity um he should have just like walked away after they gave him that bullshit reason um it says here the jeweler felt compelled to explain what he does for a living and even googled his name to show the door attendant. The staff member said he would consult colleagues inside, but the group was still denied. <laughs> oh, that's fucking crazy, bro. Um, <laughs> you Google yourself and they still say no. Despite Mr. Burker's offer to purchase tables at the value of £10,000. I didn't even ask the price of the tables, but this was turned down. What reason would they really have to say no? I wasn't causing any trouble or shouting. I didn't flare up or swear. Uh, ben Kavila, look, Ben Kavila or Ben Kavila. I don't know sure if this is guy's Congolese, um, who was part of the group and had driven from Northampton to meet Burko and friends at the evening said, I've been through this before where I've been turned away at the door, central London venue. So I wasn't particularly shocked. It's pretty crazy though, isn't it? Like you, you can't go out in central London if you're black. You have to just go to like parts of east, south, north and west. You only limit to box park basically. If you want to have a good night with some of your homeboys and the fellas from the ends and shit, the only thing you can actually go to and be confident you're going to get in and have a couple of drinks, maybe catch a cheeky wine, have a good time and dance and stuff and sing along to your favourite records is to go to box park Croydon. That's the only way you're going to have fun. There or the other one in fucking Shoreditch. Apart from that, you're fl it's a real flip of a coin. That is really heinous, man. It continues. Another friend, 33-year-old Gregory Nichols, told The Independent, we weren't causing any issues. It's not like we were Larry, young lads outside. We were quiet, in line, good as gold. If you're going to make any assumptions about us, they were any kind of threat, that wouldn't have come across as up from our behavior. This is, this is something that happened to me through my... And this is also what I don't like. You have to kind of dim your star. You can't be your loud, expressive, black, unapologetic self. You have to go there and acquiesce and kind of act like one of them to get in. Then when you try and act like one of them, they still don't let you in anyway. So you're better off just being your unapologetic self, innit? Fuck it. And just not f fucking with them in, at, at all. Um, we weren't causing any issues. Da, da, da. Um, this is something that happened to me in my, in my 20s, he says. Disappointing that in my 30s, I find myself in the same situation. That feels like the fact that we're black means that we're not considered good enough to enter certain spaces in a country despite having the financial means to say so. That's why I also think it's imperative for black people that do get in to not feel like uppity and to kind of put their nose up at people that get in after them or that don't look like they belong, quote unquote, in a space. Because even though you might be the chosen black one, just because you're with your white friends or because you're with people that maybe are more accepted in those spaces, don't think that if you were on your own, 
you wouldn't get treated the same way. It's all the same reason why I had a little bit of an issue whenever I'd go to like Bergheim in the recent years. There's a night now. There's a bit more of a contingency of like other black people that go there, but most of them are like Berliners. So I I don't know. Maybe it's just my own assumption, but I get the feeling with a lot of like Berlin black folks that go to techno raves when they see other Berlin people. No, when they see other black people that go to the techno raves, they sometimes feel like they want to be the only cool black guy within their friendship group. They don't want another guy. So you really get a lot of like weird frosty looks from some of them. Some of them might even give you dirty looks, look you up and down. Afterwards, when you bump into each other and maybe say a couple of highs and saves, they you know they kind of chill out and they realize, okay, cool, this, this person's not trying to take them over my spot as the only black guy in the fucking friendship group. But it's over oddly it happens too consistently of the times i've been there it really is odd how often it happens and it's unfortunate because we're all in this together the fact that we have to kind of acquiesce and conform and dress a certain way right have our hair a certain way wear certain earrings put on certain nail polish and all this sort of nonsense just to feel like we fit in with these people is really dumb if, you, if that's your vibe, fair enough. But if you're only doing it to fit in, it's awful. And then when you see another person that looks like you not doing that thing, you shouldn't look down on them. You should maybe kind of bring them into your, you know, bring them under your arm and whatnot, welcome them and make them feel at ease because you know how hard it was for you to get in and you have to do some questionable things to get in and feel comfortable. So I just wish we would all kind of be in this together and also make a stand and also not do embarrassing things like Googling ourselves in the queue to get in and seek their approval. Like they can go and fuck themselves to be honest after Boko posted about his negative experience on snapchat 100 water street instagram was flooded with criticism from users the restaurant later posted photographs of black women on their stories no way i want to see that uh, <laughs> let's see they, if they got an instagram account i want to see this where's the instagram there it is 100 water street they started posting <laughs> uh, groups of fucking sisters right oh no Wardour Street, what are you doing, bro? We don't believe you. You need more people, bro. What is going on here? Okay. Look, okay, they've got a picture of a PT that looks black doing some stuff. They've got some singers here. What when was these taken? Let's see what they've said here on the comments. On the Wardour Street. Let's see. They probably deleted them. Oh, look, 390 comments on there. Bamarati. Okay, they've got a post here that was edited, that was uploaded one day ago. About Los Muertos Party. Um, for Halloween, I'm guessing. One of the first comments here says, make sure you do not play any music or song by black people. Let's see how successful the event will be. Oh, another one says the following. Um, let's see the one from before. One week ago, right? This is when it happened. It says, um, racism, do not give this bar restaurant in London your money. Wow, what's going on with these racism comments? Guys, chill. I've been there many times, enjoyed my time. They never suggested racism. It's always one. It's always one guy. Always one, man. Shut up, bro. Like, shut up. Uh, racism in 2023. This is extremely disappointing. And it seems whoever is running this account feels it is it, it's feel fails to see the severity of the issue. Posted by people in the story is completely mockery. How can you deny entry because of a person's skin color? Do not go here. Boycott this club. Racism in 2023. Saying that's racism. I would never go there. Your club racist. Wow. Everybody's going in on them. People are, this person posting as the vomit emoji. So it's not looking good for 100 Wardour Street, which is a good thing because, you know, you don't discriminate against people's cut. It's just fucking shit. When people started getting on them, they went on the 24-hour Instagram stories and posted photographs of black women. Back to back, I find that to be such a mockery. He continued, I want them to understand that what they have done is mad. I'm speaking out because they're not making me feel like I'm crazy. The only difference between my friends and I and everyone else was who we let in, was who they let in was our ethnicity, sorry. Andrew Wardour Street, I thought responded more to comments from the Independent. So obviously, again, another example of just how hard it is to rave while black, especially when you're black straight boys or you know what you'd ex what you'd expect to look like black straight boys right? i don't really sure what their sexuality is but i would assume they were it's just difficult whether it's going to techno raves especially if they're techno raves that are done by people from within the lgbtq gay scene even though they, they say it's inclusive they don't mean inclusive to straight people basically especially black straight guys they hate that shit so they kind of deny you entry to go in there and then when it comes to going to high um you know high class swanky upmarket bars where you want to maybe have a expensive cocktail sit in some nice seats nice ambiance have a little bit of a smoke 
right? Maybe look at some cute girls and shit. They still deny you because they think you look like ragamuffins. It's absolutely heinous and I fucking hate it. I absolutely do. Um, and again, another example of why London is the bad vibes capital of the world. Why London is the bad vibes capital of the world. I swear to God, it's so fucking heinous.